Everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101. We've got another gauntlet video today. This one is a very interesting knife. One I've been looking forward to trying out ever since I first handled it at Blade Show. And that is the Sly Steel Kuma Lone Survivor. So we're going to go smack this thing on some wood and see what it does. So don't go away. Okay, so this is the Sly Steel Kuma Lone Survivor and designed by Wason Johnny Sai. Uh, he's the guy that does the Kuma Tac Re, which is another knife that I'm interested in trying out. Wink, wink, Craig from Tops. So, yeah, you can kind of see if you're, if you're used to his designs, it's kind of like a small Kukri S type design. Uh, very interesting ergonomic handle. The biggest thing I can say about this is kind of like uh, a smaller version of like say my knife, uh, Jessica X, where it's going to feel a little bit different if you're in the back position as opposed to the forward position. Of course, it's not as extreme as mine, but when you're back here, that's going to give you more leverage on the chop. And then when you're up here, that's going to give you more control for the finer tasks. It does have the standard Topsish, because in case you don't understand, Tops manufactures uh, the blades for Sly Steel. So you've got the same, exact same uh, sawtooth pattern as, well, let's see, I got one right here. If I can get it out. So here we got the, the SXB. Pretty much the same thing. So we're going to test that out show you exactly what it's good for what it's not good for but I can tell you from the little bit that I've played with this so far this is a nice compact chopper so let's uh, let's do to me what they did to Deadpool in the Wolverine movie and get to actually working you should see Will's face right now because <laughs> I've been pulling some really crazy stuff out of my brain here today let's and take some more traffic yeah, well, Nootropics does that. It just makes my brain go all over the place. <laughs> so. But, you know, obviously, like I said, this isn't really my thing. But I do want to test it out, check it out. And I've, you know, been interested in these, these you know, sawbacks. For me, it, it really wouldn't be for sawing, more for, like, notchings and things like that. So let's see how that works really quick. Let's just do, like, a basic notch here. All right, so you can see right there, that would be enough for like tent pegs or something like that. And something to lock line in. Uh, if you're building a certain shelter, that would be enough to lock line in, you know, putting two and two together, things like that. Uh, the actual blade itself, see this is the killer for me is, you know, I, I use power assist when I am notching. That's definitely gonna be kind of difficult with this. Oh my God, that's a hot spot from hell right there. Right there. Let's choke up a little bit, see if we can't get past that. It can. So, you know, just busting out quick notches and stuff like that, it's going to be pretty conducive for. Uh, the handle on this thing, you can see the angles. This right here, that is a hot spot. That kills. And it kind of leads into this as, as well. Um, I think the blade design, the blade profile is pretty cool. I think it's made for just that, the, the hardcore, just chopping, getting stuff out of your way. It's definitely not made for fine detailed work. So let's kind of try to use it for what it's made for. Let's put a point on this stick. I mean, 
mean, it really chops pretty good. I mean, that's what, that's what this is. This is a chopper. This is made to have a backup knife with, like something like this. You know, this compared and combined with this, you can pretty much do whatever you want out in the woods. So that's kind of my thoughts on it. It's just a big brutish chopping monster. So Chris. Now, as you can see, I'm gonna have a little bit of a different take from Will because this is what I'm wearing on my hip today. This is my SXP. And as you can see, it's kind of the brother from another mother. Definitely in the same kind of realm of a heavy chopping type knife. Now, as far as the hot spot Will was talking about, I guess I'd have to try to find the same task. I mean, if you get up there and you squeeze it as hard as you can, yeah, I can feel it. Uh, it doesn't really bother me that much. I just want to feel... Wow. That, that feels really good right there. That's just biting in. Well, it's also the way that you, uh, the tactics you use when you are feather sticking, that thumb sticking up, you're not wrapping the handle, you know, like I wrap the handle. So it, it, it mean, will be different for you. If you do it like Will does, yeah, that, that feels kind of awkward to me. But, I mean, just like the way we both use the Jessmic is completely different, too. But... Trying to get the the wrist motion in here with this. I mean, it's pretty impressive. Let me go try and chop this thing on something a little bit bigger. You know, yeah, I'm not really trying to rag on this knife. I think that it is a decent little blade. I mean, it's just obviously it's not for me. But you know, one of the things that it could excel at is kind of coming down on the handle a little bit, like here. And for, for crafting, for doing those crafting chopping, you know, like. You know, so if I'm crafting, this knife is going to pretty much excel at that. You know, it's going to be pretty good at, at something like that. Just, you know, your fine detail work. There's no way. I mean, I really do not like choking up at all on this handle. Not a bit. But it's pretty comfortable down here. This is kind of what I would consider overkill for a knife of any type. But I just want to see how it does it. So using the same mentality as I'm used to with my other... Obviously, I'm going to have my hand in the in the far back position. She's a chuck in the chips, ain't she? Yeah, they're not small chips either. No. Now, once you get a close up of this, yeah, I just kind of. You're not out of breath, so I could tell you really weren't exerting too much energy. You're you're really letting that tool do most of the work. It's a it's a heavy big old piece of steel and it really did work on that log. I mean it's not the most comfortable if I'm being honest but could I do it if I had to? 
yeah. I mean, it's some of these knives are kind of changing my ideas about stuff like kukri's. Like maybe I want to start delving into that design a little bit more. I mean, the pieces that this thing's knocking out is just ridiculous. Yeah, I think I'm getting hit with like every single one of them too. on that low, ain't she? Yeah. I'm good. You know, a lot of big knives, kind of crazy choppers like this. I mean, feather sticking isn't like the easiest thing in the world. This does a really good job at it. Those are kind of your thick fuel feathers. Let me see if I can get a little finer. People ask why we always do this. Well, it shows control of the knife. It shows how it can be in the hand when you're trying to do a fine motor skill as opposed to just swinging it and beating it into a tree. You know, what if this isn't, what if you screwed up and this is the only thing you got? I'm just using a very fine touch right there. Well, that's not. Especially back in this portion of the blade, it's, it's pretty easy. But, I mean, it's, it's just kind of the right size where you can do some heavier chopping tasks with the forward portion of the blade but it's not so unwieldy that you can choke up or get in another position and just do some really fine stuff are you going to process a rabbit with this thing probably not but since we're talking about feather sticks Uh, kind of typical with tops. Tops does not do sharp 90 degree spines. There's a couple, two different trains of thought in the knife uh, making world about 90 degree spines. Some swear it makes it weak, which I personally see no evidence of that, having used a lot of LT Wright stuff. And uh, some don't. Well, I mean, a lot of people think that, you know, if this is a crafting knife, if I'm crafting with this knife, I don't want a 90 degree spine on it for thumb power assisting and, and tight corners and things like that. But I usually generally don't have too much of an issue with it. If you're packing this knife, I would just say have a dedicated striker for your ferro rod or one of your other things that you should have. I mean, you should have a small neck knife, crafting knife, uh, Leatherman multi-tool, something. You're gonna have something on you somewhere that you can use that fire steel for. This is not a knife that's going to do that for you because there's no 90 degree spine. And as I've done on other videos like the SXB, 
if you try to get your sparks using this you're just all you're gonna do is you're gonna cut some really heavy grooves into your ferro rod mess your ferro rod all up so I mean this is just that's one of those things that you generally are not going to get with anything manufactured by tops is the whole 90 degree spine stuff but it is kind of it is fun to use and it does take a you know I've not touched the edge I don't know if John sharpened it up before he sent it to me but that's something that we should definitely talk about uh, if he did he did if he didn't he didn't I don't think he did because there was a little bit of a uh, little bit of staining on the edge which I just kind of cleaned up with a 3000 grit but if that's the case then this is still holding an edge really really well let me see I mean look at that That thing's still shaving hair. After, you know, all that chopping and stuff. Tops is one of the few factory knife makers that does a... And I know that's, that can be confusing to people because, you know, it's sly steel. But, you know, it's, it's a known thing. Tops makes these for them. But they do that differential heat treat on their edges. And that really goes a long way to them having really great edge retention. Uh, it's because I didn't try it on this thing yet. I might as well at least uh, see how this feels, baton and some kindling. You know, again, every, a lot of people worry about these saw teeth, but in this case, the saw teeth are back, kind of like on the SXB, your baton, and this, this area up here is clear, so you don't have to really worry about that. pretty much non-eventful. You know, and sometimes you get some comments like, won't you baton it through something bigger? Well, that's because you're not supposed to do that. You know, I understand sometimes we get a little crazy with knife reviews, but that whole batoning debate that people have about your tools and stuff like that, that's because people are trying to bite off more than their tool can chew, or what you should do. If you're going after stuff that big, you know, have, have an axe or something. Yeah, I mean, we made a, a whole 30-minute video on just this subject. Yeah. You, know, you know, why to baton, an old video. So uh, look up why baton on Prepare My 101, and we'll talk about it. But, I mean, something like the size of that with this... You know, 1095 American heat treated you know, steel. I mean, it, you're not going to hurt this blade. But when you're going over after this stuff that's this big, you're just going to wear yourself out. Uh, there's no need for it. There's always smaller stuff in the woods to go after. You don't have to be felling giant trees. But yeah, I mean, it does pretty much all of the key tasks that I would do with a blade of this type. This is not a do-all blade. This is not replacing your Mora Bushcraft Black. This would go really nice with a Mora Bushcraft Black because the Mora Bushcraft Black would be able to do everything that this one doesn't do well. And then this can do, you know, all the other stuff. And some people just like these types of knives. You know, we always get the whole white, why don't you just use an axe? You know, I got this SXB on. Some of us just like this stuff. You know, it's fun for us. Uh, we're comfortable with these types of tools. Not everything works for everybody. But as far as this goes... What do you think about that coating? Uh, well, I'm not a big fan of coating. But lately what Topps has been putting on, it's not anywhere near as rough and as aggressive as it used to be so i've got no problem just uh i mean like right here there's no wear right here and you can see that that's not really that bad so this is a working tool um that's not going to bother me certain tools 
I'm not going to get all, like, you know, Jessica X, the SXB. I'm not going to get all bent out of shape if it's not all pretty at the end of the day. Yeah, I'm going to clean it up, but some scuffs, stuff like that. I mean, EJ's SXB, that thing looks beat to heck, but it looks really cool that way. So, being that this is a, a high carbon steel, it's just giving it a little extra rust protection. It depends on the knife to me. I don't automatically strip everything because it just, it just depends. Certain knives like these, these are working tools to me. All right, before we close this out, I really want to take a minute and talk about the sheath because this sheath to me is really cool. Uh, you've got molly straps and pals webbing on both sides. So this just means you can easily strap this to a vest, to a pack, and then you could also molly some sort of other pouch on the front. And then that's up to you how you want to do this. You're, it, it, they're not making that up for that. You're not making that decision for you by putting on the pouch and this. It's like, well, I would rather have something, you know, maybe uh, a companion knife. So you could do something like like a like a Becker BK16 has a sheath that would actually match this really well, and it's got that Molly stuff on the back. Uh, you could strap that right to the front of this, no problem. Or you've got all these loops, you can stick your, your six inch ferro rod in there. A uh, lot of options with this sheath. And I'd have to say, if I owned this knife, I would not be in a hurry to resheat this. I would probably see what I could come up with with the sheath that it comes with, you know, adding some things to it, because it's actually a really cool sheath. I like it. That doesn't happen very often on my channel. Usually it's like, okay, the sheath works until I can get a yellow hawk or whatever. But uh, yeah, it's Velcro, it's not snaps, but you know, on this one, I don't know, it's, the, the, the sheath doesn't bother me. I kind of actually like it. So that's my take on the Sly Steel Kuma Lone Survivor. Not sure which channel this is going to go to next, but uh, you'll see it show up again here shortly in the gauntlet. I'm Chris from Prepare My 101. That was Will from Manus Outdoors. Hopefully we covered uh, the pros and the cons of this particular blade in helping you make a decision. Off the top of my head, I don't know how much this thing costs, so through the magic of editing, I'm going to put it on the screen right here, right now. So if it if this is something I, I would imagine this would appeal to, you know, the Wace and Johnny Sci fans, uh, Kukri fans, Tops fans, they're gonna they're gonna like this knife. Alright guys, till next time, see you then. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101, and here's a picture of Jesse. Because she's not here today. And Will's over here laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but be that as it may, we still gotta... <laughs> okay, read <retreat>. three. <laughs> Play that as it may. <laughs> I quit English for a